All right, Shalom Israel. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash, for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside him. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Rakakwadash, to the Holy Spirit. And Shalom to the elect whom the Lord have given ears to hear. And I want to get into a um a lesson today entitled What Can We Learn from the Life of Noah? So without further ado, I just want to jump straight into it. This is Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And mind you, in this um the synopsis of this of this chapter is a world going wrong. Right? So let me read it in the NLT. Right? Well, let's start at the KJV and then I'll jump up to the NLT. Alright, and as you see, I got it on the top and the bottom so your brothers can read along. Right? So it says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man, beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Right? So now I want to read up at the NLT and the verse 5 again, Genesis 6 and 5. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything they thought of, he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So Yahweh was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, and Yahweh said, I will wipe this human race I've created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground and even the birds of the sky, I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor with Yahweh. So, just in these few scriptures, as we read, we see the counsel of the Lord. And after the Lord made his decision, all right, he told his prophet showing you that by the time the prophet speaks these words all right the judgment is pretty much already set reading on it says the story of noah this is the account of noah i'll continue on the nlt and his family noah was a righteous man the only blameless person living on earth at the time and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy, I have decided to destroy all living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence yes i will wipe them all out with the earth and what do you see that's trending now all right a mother kills her five-year-old uh, child you know a man kills you know his his brother over a video game 
Um, so many violent things happening in the earth right now. Right? The hearts, the scriptures speak about in the last days shall be perilous times. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous, meaning dangerous times, shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters. Let me grab it in the NLT. As opposed to, you know, trying to break down every word. A lot of times the NLT does a good job at it. So it says, uh, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. You know, you have, um, you got this nigga, uh, DDG, which he, he did a, a music video, with, I guess it was his nephew or whatever, talking about, I want to kill my mom, I want to kill my grandma. You know, and this is a sentiment of the youth nowadays. You know, I'm, 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 uh, you know, just watching, you know, sometime in my free time, you know, watching Folly or whatever, you watching TikTok, and you got little kids, you know, just wilding out, you know, doing crazy ass pranks on their parents, you know, uh, cursing their parents out. This is the time we're in. All right. And, you know, as we preach, you know, from the apostles on down, we've seen the wickedness, especially the apostles, you know, coming up in the 70s and the 80s. You know, what's a hot topic now is the woman, you know, how they getting worse and worse. All right. Which they say, like a woman, the woman is the indignation or, or the. Uh, the state of the woman shows the the downtrot of the nation. All right, so when you look over time from when those men grew up and even their parents, you know, they see their parents and their grandparents, the degradation of it all is at its lowest. All right, whereas a woman before uh, gloated on being with one man her whole life, now today a woman gloats, you know, on having multiple sexual partners. All right. They gloat in the fact that they don't need a man. That they a boss bitch. Right. That they make millions. Off of selling their ass. So this is the world we are living in today. So again by the time. That Noah. Began to prophesy. Right. Which obviously means that the Lord gave him. The warning. To tell the people. All right. Judgment is pretty much already set. And that's what we tell the people. Listen, the Lord is going to destroy this place. Get your shit together so you won't be caught up in the missiles. So you won't be caught up in the plagues that he's bringing. But the people don't hear. But now jumping back to Genesis 6. Right. And I was at. Verse 10. Verse 11. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all the living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them out all out with the earth. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Which as it says in the KJV, which 
sometimes I do have to go back and forth because um, the translation might be off. So it says, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it, make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to it an ark, and in a cubit thou shalt finish it above. Now, according to the math, I think I did the math. One cubit is supposed to be like 18 inches, as they say. What does it took you read in uh, verse 16? So, 300 cubits will be something like 4,500 feet. 4,500 feet long, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, 5,400 feet, you know? So, that's just a discrepancy, which, like I said, according according to uh, what we're reading, it should be 5,400 feet. Nevertheless, this is a big-ass boat. Um, You know, that's just, <laughs> you know, that's me. I like to do math. So, um, reading on, leave an 18-inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat lower middle and upper look i'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes everything on earth will die and that's what we say all right we tell you let me grab that. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved. Jumping straight to the point, actually. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So, as in the days of Noah, all right, we emulate that. As we are in the days of Noah. Alright. The scriptures speak about how. That which was shall be. Alright. When the same spirits are back doing the same vile violent acts. Which got the world destroyed before. At that time is with water. And now the Lord is going to flood this place with missiles. With fire. Jumping back to Genesis 6 and 18. But I will conf confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male or female, into the boat with you to keep them alive from the flood. <laughs> All right. Jumping down to verse 22. So Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. All right. So Noah, he prophesied to the people. But mind you, he also... He also not only prophesied to the people, but believing in the in, in the destruction, went to go uh, capitalize on the word that the Lord told him to do. Meaning Noah wasn't a hypocrite. Right. And that's something we can't be a hypocrites. You know, you go out there, you go on the highways and hedges, you curse Israel out. All right. But then. Behind the scenes, you're not doing what you're prophet. You're not doing what you're preaching. You're not, as they say, you're not practicing what you preach. Right? And we know that the Lord hates hypocrites. So, if we truly believe, this is something that we would be uh, implementing into our lives. All right? We go out there on Saturdays, we do our lessons. Nevertheless, off the camera, right, you're praying, you're examining yourself, you're reading, you're fasting. All right. You're making your body a living sacrifice for Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Right. And I say we are because if I don't do this, I'm, I'm as good as dead as well. Right. So, let me jump to Exodus 
Exodus 14 because another point I wanted to make is that as according to the days of Noah, very few people are going to be saved. You know, and a lot of times Essentially what I'm what I'm what I want to say is that you got to believe for yourself cuz a lot of these people most likely not going to make it. All right? And knowing that it helps us to build um if you know you're building something, you know, for your a uh, foundation. You know, let's say you're building a house that you got to uh, sleep in. You're not going to take building that roof lightly. You know, you're going to put careful consideration in building it, knowing that it's to your it's it's to your salvation. It's to uh, it's to your salvation. Right. So. I want to get. um. So now again. You know, just to reiterate, Genesis 6 is about a world going wrong and the Lord telling his prophet what he's going to do for the violence of the people in this world. Right. So now Exodus. You know, which Lord willing, you know, you brothers understand what I'm saying. Yeah, how about Shimia uh, relay this message uh, to the ears of those that need to hear? Right, so now we're going to jump to Exodus, I'm, I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 12. The certainty of the Lord's judgment. So, mind you, the Lord's judgment was certain before it came. Before uh, the Lord put it in the mouth of Noah, the resting place, to tell the people, to prophesy to the people. Right? So him believing that went to, went to uh, create a safe haven, so to speak, for himself. <laughs> right? So it says, then, this is Ezekiel 14 verse 12. Then this message came to me from the Lord, son of man. Suppose the people of a country were to sin against me, then I lifted my fist to crush them, cutting off their food supply and sending a famine to destroy both people and animals. Then I, we just read that, right? Genesis chapter 6, verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, man, beast, creepy things the fathers of the air for it repented me that I have made them so if the Lord is destroying beasts you can only imagine that man was most likely doing bestiality back then they was doing all manner of wickedness all right because what the beast had to do with anything you know um so it says I lifted up my fist to crush them Cutting off their food supply and sending a famine to destroy both people and animals. All right. And that's the time the Lord is the Lord is bringing today. The Lord is bringing a famine. All right. The Lord is, uh, you know, uh, having all these oil spills in the oceans where we, where we receive our fish from. That's that's not that's not a coincidence. Did not the Lord say he's going to destroy Egypt with plagues as before. But as Egypt was hit. With a uh, famine. All right. Whereas he turned the rivers into uh, blood and the fish died. You know, he I believe he killed the cattle. He um had the locusts eat up the crops. Right. So it says and sending a famine to destroy both people and animals. You see, going to show you, too, that the Lord always had a, the same antidote, the same antidote for the same problem. Right. Pain, death, like it tells us in 2nd Ezra 15, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Punishing the wicked to evil. You know? 
Maybe I could be uh, mixing two uh, precepts. Nevertheless, that's the antidote for the violent, for the actions of violent uh, men. So it says, for the actions of those that don't follow and fear Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. So it says, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were there, their righteousness would save no one but themselves, says the sovereign Yahweh. Or suppose I, and mind you, you know, Noah was out there for a minute, you know, prophesying to the people, building an ark. And only eight people were saved. Now, to the average person, that would, that would have been a discouragement. Nevertheless, Noah just continued to chuck on and his faith, he was essentially saved by his faith. And Yahweh, Yahweh shot. That was counted to him for righteousness. All right. It says, suppose I were to send wild animals to invade the country, kill the people, and make the land too desolate and dangerous to pass through. And surely as I, as I live, says the sovereign Yahweh, says the sovereign Lord, even if those three men were there, right, which these men have always found favor and grace in the sight of the Lord. Again, these men are the resting place, right? If you don't listen to these, in other words, if you don't listen to these men, you're fucked. Does not the scripture say in the last days, according to Isaiah 32, all right, that the man of the Lord shall be as a resting place from the wind and a tempest in his, um, All right, behold, um, Isaiah 32 and 2, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the storm, as rivers of water in a dry place and a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. All right, so again, the men of the Lord are that, you know, for those who believe. All right. Whereas Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah allows us to do these lessons, these epistles, to comfort the brethren, to exhort, all right, to rebuke uh, uh, wicked behavior, all right. So without that, the people are doomed. Does not the scripture say, without, uh, where there's no vision, the people perish? Now, if the Lord only revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets, that means the people are fucked. All right, it's stuck in the veil of darkness in the time that the Lord actually brings through his judgment. And according to the time of Noah, remember the scripture said that the Lord closed the ark. Meaning when the Lord comes back, he's going to close our mouths. Or oh, it's like it, not meaning, but he actually closed the ark in that time. But in this time, he's going to close our mouth. All right. So these people can't. Essentially, they just got to deal with what they got to deal with. They won't get any answers, nor any comfort for what they have to deal with. It tells us that in Ezekiel the third, or is it the twelfth chapter, that he will make us to be dumb, meaning um, he would not put, he would take away the spirit, he would take the spirit off of us to reprove. You know, and best believe Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is making brothers cold in these last days, man. You know, that's the spirit you want to be in. All right. Numb to the judgment these niggas is about to face. So it says, As surely as I live, saith the sovereign Lord, even if these three, even if those three men were there, they wouldn't be able to save their own sons or daughters. They alone would be saved, but the land would be made desolate. Or suppose I were to bring war against the land and I send enemies enemy armies to destroy both people and animals as surely as i have lived saith the sovereign lord even if those three men were there they wouldn't be able to save their own sons or daughters they alone would be saved right so that's pretty much it on that with that you know um lord willing you i can edify shalom to the elect